Let's try to tie this up in a neat bow. We're almost there. Now what you can see over here in part C, this is my best shot. Uh, we're not in a maths classroom, so I had no ruler. So forgive my tangent, it kind of like wobbles a little bit, but I, I gave it my best go. What I've got here is a section of, as Sebastian pointed out, a section of y equals tan 2x. I haven't done all of it because, well, it goes on forever, so you can never do all of it. But the, the very valid question was asked, like, well, how much of it am I supposed to draw? Like, they didn't say draw it from here to here. So my suggestion would be, let's look at the question. Um, nothing is explicitly stated, so what is implied, right? What part of y equals 10 to x is needed to answer the question? Now have a look. Part D is kind of the key, right? Which is like a bit sneaky. You're like, I'm trying to answer part C. You need to know what's ahead, right? Part D implies this situation down here. Do you see it over here? In fact, I think, um, let me use this. This is this little triangle that the whole question was working toward, okay? So really, based on part D, the only part of y equals 10 to x that I need is enough so that I can work out where this is gonna go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, just for the sake of completeness, you can see how much I've drawn. Um, I've got this asymptote that you guys told me about, but I haven't labeled it. I wonder if you can help me. Ordinarily, just regular old 10x has an asymptote, or the first one, at x equals what? Does anyone remember? It's pi on, pi on two, right? Because you're dividing, 10 is sine over cos, and at pi on two, cos is zero. So you can't divide by that, right? But this is not 10x. This is 10, uh, I rubbed it off. <laughs> this is tan 2x, right? We said it was twice as squashed. So this is not x equals pi on two, it's x equals pi on four. It's, it's half of that because everything is squashed in. Does that make sense? Pi on two is now at pi on four. And that's why this pi on eight is here. Uh, you can see, by the way, because I was sneaky and I already knew this was coming, pi on eight should be exactly halfway between naught and pi on four. So that gives me a rough sense for the accuracy of my scale. Were you gonna be checked on that? Mm, probably not. But the worse your diagram is, the harder it is to use it. Does that make sense? So it's in your interest to make it as accurate as you can, within reason. I didn't get a ruler out or anything like that. All right, so here's my sketch. Last question. Find the area of the triangle formed by this tangent, which I've drawn in black, and the coordinate axes. So the coordinate axes are here, x, and here, y. So that's why I have this. I'm going to outline it here in black. And uh, it's a right angled triangle, right, which is nice for us. You can see how part B kind of leans into helping you get this answer because you need a base and a height. And part B told us what the base and the height were. Uh, let's do the height first because that's what we calculated first. What is the height of this triangle? Have a look. It's on the board. Okay, let's think about this. I did say it was on the board. I've got negative pi over 2 plus 1. Now just be super careful with this, right? This is the y-intercept. So it's the, I'm squishing it the TV here. It's the y-value down here. But just be watchful, right? You can even see in my diagram, that is a negative value, agreed? Because it's down below the x-axis, right? Now, we should make sense of that because pi is about 3.14. That makes pi on 2 about 1.57. So negative 1.57 plus 1. That's still negative. It's like negative a half-ish. So that's where it is down there. But I don't need a negative. I actually just want the what we would call the absolute value, right? Just the positive part, which is what happens if you switch this around. Do you see that? So I'm going to label that as uh, height equals 1 minus pi, did I do, no, all the way around, sorry, pi on 2 minus 1. That was a bit messy. Pi on 2 minus 1. Can you see it gives me the same value, but just the positive version? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's the height. Uh, boy, that's messy. Sorry, it's really bothering me. There you go. Height equals pi on 2 minus 1. And then I need the, the base, which I guess would be this here, roughly. Where's that from? Yeah, it's from the x-intercept. Now, Luckily for us, this is already positive because you can see it's over here on the positive side, okay? So pi on eight minus a quarter, that's the base. Pi on eight take away a quarter, all right? So all I need to do is go half base times height. This is part D. Area equals half 
base, and then here comes height, pi on 2 minus 1. Now strictly speaking, at this point, you are done. Like, they didn't say to simplify the answer, but I think we should. It's not difficult to, and it's a huge mess that's going to become very neat, actually, if we work to simplify this. So, can you help me out? What might be something you could do to make this a little easier or neater to write? Any thoughts? Have a look. What do you reckon, Daniel? Um, I expanded it. Yep. Completely, and then you end up with uh, pi squared minus 4 pi plus 4. Hold on, hold on. Slow down. Say that one more time. Pi squared? Uh, pi squared minus 4 pi plus 4. Mm -hmm. You end up with that. It takes a couple lines. Yep. And then you can... Over, over 32, by the way. Over 32? I did think there were some fractions that should be there. Yeah, yeah very good. Yeah. Simplify the top, which is pi minus 2 squared. Uh -huh. Pi minus 2 all squared on 32? Yeah. Okay, so expanding is uh, a way to get there. You can see, hopefully some of you recognize, oh, that's a perfect square, right? And that does look so much simpler. It's a big improvement on what's here. I'm going to suggest we can get that same answer without expanding, because expanding is something which I often do when I'm like, I don't know what else to do. Um, it works if you can see the factorization, but I wonder if you can see there's actually something here. We're slightly cheating because we actually already know where we're headed. There's something here that can help you see you do not need to expand quite so quickly. Does anyone see it? Hmm, what do you reckon, Michael? Do we convert the radius Converting to radius degrees is often a useful thing for us, particularly because we're so used to thinking in degrees. However, I'm going to suggest, like, going back to here, when you are in radian mode versus being degree mode, the real difference is in what your calculator ends up calculating, right? In fact, the format of this isn't going to be dramatically simpler in degrees versus radians. Um, and also don't forget, this is now an area, right? An area. So in fact, we don't measure area in degrees, we measure rotational angle, yeah? So for that reason, I think radians is, is fine. Here's my suggestion. Have a look at our brackets, right? Daniel's kind of helped us out because we already can see we should. Oh, this thing is so dicey. I'm not standing on that side. We can see we're going to end up with this nice factorized thing. So have a look here, particularly this one, right? Can you see there's a factor you can take out of this that will make it sort of connect, yeah? Oh, four is very close. It's actually a quarter, one over four, right? If I take a quarter out of this, I can, reckon I can squeeze it in here. Here comes a quarter, and what you get left with is, this becomes pi on 2, and this becomes minus 1. See that? And you're like, oh, I've got, I've got two of those. So this I can write as squared. Uh, I've got 1 over, <laughs> aha, I've got 1 over 8. This is pi on 2 minus 1 all squared. I'm going to suggest there's really just one step between this and this answer that Daniel gave us by expansion, okay? I'll let you guys work that part out. It's just a little bit of algebra that you have to be careful with. So, this kind of question is pretty classic. It's the sort of application of something you know how to do. They didn't even tell you to differentiate, but you know you need to to get a gradient of this tangent. And then the geometry that comes to the right, it's kind of like, oh, it combines a lot of graphical and algebraic skills that we want to assess and that the HSC wants to assess. That's why you'll often see questions like this.